equals four, uh, equals two is ten decimal. Eight plus two plus one is eleven decimal. Uh, eight plus four is twelve decimal. And then whenever we uh, we get into hexadecimal in a second, um, I know there's hexadecimal is base sixteen, so instead of you know binary base two, which we got one of these slides, hexadecimal is going to use you know four binary. I know that there's there's ways to convert directly between hexadecimal and decimal without immediately converting to binary, um, but I actually find that it's actually a lot easier to just convert it to binary and then uh, and then convert it to uh, decimal. Too. So uh, on hexadecimal, you're you've got a single digit representing up to 15, um, so you have to use a combination of, of numbers and letters. Everything on hexadecimal from 0 through 9 is going to be the exact same as decimal. So you know, 0, da, 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 all the way to 9. When we get to 10, we've got two digits for decimal, so we have to convert it to a single digit for hexadecimal. So we start with capital letter A and work our way down to, to the F. So A corresponds to 10, B corresponds to 11. Best bet on this is probably going to just be to do a lot of um, a lot of examples. Um, so we already you can already tell from there like how to convert binary to decimal. Um, you know, using memorizing this kind of chart or at least like ha knowing what powers of two you need to know. Um, you can just you know add up each decimal spot and convert it to to uh, each binary spot and convert it to decimal directly. To go backwards um, from uh, binary to decimal is a little bit different. Let's say we have, well, let's say we have First thing you do is you find the highest power of two that uh, will fit into 129. And if you look over here at our sheet, uh, it's two to the power of seven, 128 is the highest value you can use ever. We went two to the power of eight. Well, once we, for one, we'd be out of the, the subnet, but for two, we would uh, just be at 256 and we can't see that. Anymore. So seven spots. Two thirty seven. Two thirty seven. So two thirty seven. Um, again, the the largest value you can take out of that is one twenty eight. So one two to seven spot. Okay, so we're left with one and nine. Sixty-four is going to be here, so we'll subtract sixty-four and plug it one in. So 
another handy trick I found out too is the last digit's always going to be one if it's an odd number. What's that? Another handy trick I found out is if it's an odd number, the last digit's always going to be one in binary. If it's not a number? If it's an odd number. Oh, if it's an odd number. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The one at the end is always going to be there. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. there's if you look all across the line, there's there, since it's all powers of two, you're right. There's there's going to be no odd values, so you're always going to know the last one's going to be one. Um, let's let's do another one. Let's say. Uh, 180. 180. Yeah. Okay, so 180. Again, the largest value you can take out power of 2 uh, for 8 bits is going to be 1.8. So throw 1 to one twenty eight spot. Subtract 1.8 from 3. And then you What would be the, the benefits of converting to binary if you know that A is 10 and B is 11? Um, well, if you're gonna, if you're using larger numbers or whatever, and you okay. want to know what the full like binary length is or the full decimal length is, because um, if it's like say they want the decimal length, the decimal value for two hexadecimal characters like FF, you know, FF added together. Yeah. Like, it, you can't just, you know, separate them and, you know, F is 15 and F 15, it's not 30. It's going to, yeah. you know. Okay. Okay. And again, you know, hexadecimal, um, it's just, again, four binary digits. Um, since you can't use, you're going to use a single character. Once you get to 10, you got to start at A, B, C, D, E. And honestly, like memorizing, you know, that A corresponds to 10, B corresponds to 11, it's not that bad of an idea. But if you know, like, where they start, it's not hard to derive it either. So as long as you remember that that A is 10 and F is 15, you can figure out what the middle ones are. Okay. And then IP address classes. Um, each IP address, we talked about this very briefly can be divided into two parts, the network and the host. Um, the number of network and host octets determines the IP class. 